Hello Internet, welcome to Antina tutorial series. Today I want to discuss about helix antennas or they are more popularly known as helical antennas. Uh, they are classified under traveling wave antennas and they have this peculiar shape they have uh, this wire kind of a kind of an arrangement in a helix fashion which is mounted over a ground plane and if we take the coordinate systems rectangular coordinate system this antenna is going to radiate in the direction of the axis of the helix so if we consider the axis of the helix to be right across the center of the helical antenna this is going to radiate all its energy in the axial direction which will be z in this case and <clears throat> the second most important thing about helix antenna is that it will radiate circularly polarized signal along axis so these are basically two points summed up in one and <clears throat> it's a wide band antenna with real input impedance and the impedance will only contain the real part which is the resistance so if we go along with these these points to study helix antenna it will be it will be easier to interpret the construction and the objective with which this antenna was made so let us begin with the construction and uh, the parameters associated with the helical antenna as far as the geometry of helical antenna is concerned it has a few parameters worth noting the first one being the diameter which is of course this this thing the diameter of the circle so I can write down D as the diameter of a turn <clears throat> now depending upon the size of the size and length of the helical antenna will have bigger and smaller diameters will have more and less a number of turns <clears throat> and then of course the circumference can be calculated as C which will be uh, pi into D then we have an important parameter which is the distance between the two turns of helical antenna or you can call it as the vertical separation between two turns and it is denoted by S so S will be the vertical separation between turns of helical antenna and this will be a constant quantity all the turns are going to be uniformly spaced and finally we have a parameter known as alpha which is known as the pitch angle now the pitch angle will decide uh, the angle by which uh, these two turns are separated if the pitch angle is higher of course there will be a greater gap between two turns so we want the pitch angle to be between 12 to 14 degrees and the typical value is 13 degrees and 
mathematically it is tan inverse s upon c and then we have uh, the number of turns in helical antenna again uh, for this particular helical antenna that I've drawn uh, we just have three turns and uh, the total height can be denoted as H so H can be calculated as the number of turns into the separation between two consecutive turns so this is pretty simple formula to calculate the total height of the helical antenna which is the number of turns into the separation between two turns <coughs> now for this particular helical antenna that that I'm that I've drawn on the on the page uh, this has a <coughs> left hand uh, circular polarization because the curls are in in such a way that uh, the signal is is moving in the direction of my thumb so uh, you could you could figure out from the from the direction of propagation that uh, whether it's a left hand circularly polarized or a right hand circular polarized had it been a right hand circularly polarized uh, helical then the signal would have gone in the downwards direction depending upon the direction of the thumb so because we have assumed that uh, the direction of propagation is in the positive z direction so it must be a left hand circularly uh, polarized helical antenna <coughs> and uh, there are some limitations on on the circumference of the helix antenna so I can write it down as limits on C and for the optimal performance of the helical antenna C needs to be within the permissible limits of 3 lambda by 4 to 4 lambda by 3 so we would not want the value of the circumference to go in multiples of lambda so that needs to be uh, closer to lambda either slightly lower or slightly higher to lambda but uh, keeping a value of C to be 5 lambda, 10 lambda, 15 lambda is not a good idea. It's not recommended at all. <clears throat> so this is this is supremely important for the uh, design of uh, the helic helical antenna. Now it's it's as I mentioned, it's a traveling wave antenna, which means the current travels along the antenna and the phase varies continuously and I've also mentioned that the input impedance is is real and I like to mention in a note here that the value of input impedance is equivalent to 140 C by lambda <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and finally I like to mention the normalized radiation pattern for the electric field intensity component or in other words it is very important to know the value of E theta and uh, which is approximately equivalent to E phi and this is sine pi by 2 n cos theta and sine of n <coughs> where 
omega is k s cos theta minus 1 minus pi 2 plus 1 upon n. Now these things are are generally uh, recommended to be committed to memory the values of uh, electric field intensity at different points in space so we are taking the case of a cylindrical coordinate system so you sh you can simply uh, commit this thing to memory this is one formula <coughs> where the value of omega has to be this and finally we are left with the value of gain that this antenna gives now this is very very important I like um, to specially highlight that you should note this value down and if you wish you can pause this video to note the value down and then resume so I'll write down the value of gain of this antenna is given by And another variation to this formula is this. So one is expressed in terms of the wavelength, the other one is expressed in terms of uh, the frequency. Now we've gotten all these things sorted out here the C is the circumference, N is the number of turns, S is the spacing between the two turns if we are given uh, the operational frequency we can use this formula C being the speed of light if we are given the operational wavelength we can use this formula but you can see that the gain is dependent on the number of turns the circumference and the spacing between the two turns <clears throat> and that is why uh, uh, you see super large helical antennas on, uh, in TV transmission setup or radio transmission setups and moreover uh, they are they are mounted upright on the roofs so that makes it easier to transmit the signal towards satellite or or towards uh, ionosphere for ionospheric propagation now <clears throat> for for beginners who are just starting out with antennas this formula may prove very handy for numericals uh, so you could note this formula down and furthermore the half power beam width of helical antenna is 65 lambda upon c under root n s upon lambda again this depends upon all the parameters of of the physical parameters of helical antenna it depends upon the geometry of the uh, antenna so very very simple antenna in terms of its construction very very simple antenna in terms of its mathematics and super useful for <coughs> propagation because it has circular polarization circular polarized waves are very very good for long distance propagation and if you wish to if you wish to study more about polarization the difference between horizontal polarization vertical polarization and circular polarization their benefits over each other you could refer to my uh, other video on polarization in this uh, tutorials playlist and that's about it for this antenna uh, I'd like to specially thank everybody who has supported my channel and who has watched this video and if you considered this video helpful then please subscribe to my channel and thank you so much again have a good day and a good life bye